Today we're gonna talk about two powerful 3D packages which are 3ds Max and Blender and we will try to give you a general idea about what they are capable of when it comes to modeling, simulation, dynamics, animation and so on. 3D modeling 3ds Max has been considered one of the best 3D packages for a very long period of time and it still is to a certain extent because it has a solid set of modifiers and tools that can help you model anything you can think of. But unlike Blender, 3ds Max has primitive sculpting tools that can't really help you when it comes to modeling organic stuff. That's why 3D character and environment artists usually use specialized sculpting software such as ZBrush, because it is capable of taking a simple model to a whole new level by adding intricate details using millions of polygons. The reason I said that 3ds Max has been the best because more than a decade ago it was the best 3D modeling package next to Softimage, but to be honest, in the last 7 years or so we did not see anything that can be considered worthwhile when it comes to modeling. But I think that Autodesk is quote unquote trying to improve its modeling tools to keep up with the rapid pace of development of software such as Blender. Actually, I don't know, maybe they will come up with better modeling tools for 3ds Max, but for now this does not seem to be the case. On the other hand, Blender has been developed like crazy in the last couple of years with a variety of new features, especially with the new releases, which makes it competitive when it comes to 3D modeling. Blender actually gives 3D artists a very good experience working on their 3D models because it has a lot of different modifiers like 3ds Max has and it allows you to work smoothly as well when doing polygon modeling. Where Blender completely beats 3ds Max in terms of modeling is having the ability to sculpt. It is not just a couple of brushes that will help you do small things here and there, it is a complete system that can help you work on characters, monsters, environment elements and so on. And it is becoming even better with the 2.83 release moving forward to the 2.9 release and beyond because the sculpting development team seems to be very active. In terms of the modeling add-ons or plugins that can be used for 3ds Max or Blender, I would say that 3ds Max has some nice ones that can help you do a lot of things when it comes to hard surface modeling, but the add-ons that can be used with Blender are better as far as I can see. So in terms of modeling, I have to give it to Blender because I think right now it has many advantages over 3ds Max. Simulation and Dynamics Blender has a good particle system that can be used to create visual effects like fire, smoke, dust, blizzards, and so on. Also using Blender's rigid body and soft body dynamics, you can achieve realistic results to a certain extent. You can simulate soft bodies such as bouncing balls, body parts, flesh, or anything you can think of, and rigid body dynamics allow you to simulate single or multiple solid elements as they interact with each other or with the environment. Also Blender has a good cloth simulation that is used for making cloth, flags, banners and so on. In addition to that, now Blender has the ability to sculpt cloth using a sculpting brush which is a fantastic way to create custom wrinkles and cloth effects. The tool features a custom cloth solver that can be used within sculpting mode in real time on localized areas on the mesh. You can control the cloth material by grabbing, dragging or pinching the surface. Blender also has motion tracking tools that are good enough to create professional camera tracking for VFX shots and it was actually developed further during some of the live action films that were created by the Blender Foundation and the Blender Institute. And what makes Blender unique compared to the other 3D packages is the fact that it can also be used for compositing. On the other hand, 3ds Max is also capable of doing many things like soft body and rigid body simulations using its particle system to create different effects like snow, clouds, spray, and so on. A couple of years ago, 3ds Max has actually seen a major update in its ability to do fluid simulations using the new fluid simulation solver that is actually capable of generating good fluid simulations because it is actually based on the fluid simulation system Bifrost that we can find in Autodesk Maya. One of the major events that took place the last year when it comes to the simulation and dynamics you can do in 3ds Max is the introduction of Tyflow, which is a free plugin that works inside 3ds Max. And basically if this gets integrated with 3ds Max, I think it will be adding a lot to its users. Particle Flow was cutting edge at one point, but it couldn't keep up with the development of the other software. So Tyson took matter in his own hands and rewrote the whole thing in his free time to create Tyflow. It is similar to Particle Flow, but it is much powerful. 
it is a particle simulator that takes simple concepts like position, rotation, scale and velocity and applies them to a huge number of individual points in space. When simple rules are applied to a lot of things like at once, the result is an emergence of complex patterns and behaviors which can then be used to create all kinds of different visual effects. So when it comes to dynamic simulations and VFX work, in general I think that Blender is better than 3ds Max if relying on their own tools without plugins. But using third-party plugins, 3ds Max has the upper hand because if you are a 3ds Max user, you get access to the most advanced visual effects technology that is being used to work on big budget movies using plugins such as Phoenix FD, Thinking Particles, Film Effects and so on. Rendering when it comes to rendering, 3ds Max has many render engines like Art Render Engine, Quicksilver, and Viewfield Renderer. But by far the most important one is Arnold. Arnold is an unbiased, physically based render engine that was created by a company called Solid Angle, then acquired by Autodesk in 2016. Arnold has been used in many Hollywood movies like Thor, Captain America, X Men, The Avengers, Pacific Rim, and much more. Before Arnold, 3ds Max users had to use Manta Ray, which is a discontinued render engine that was on top of the world once, but in the last decade, it lost a good portion of its users and faded away into oblivion. Arnold is a very strong render engine that can help you render very high quality images and animations, and it also has now the ability to do real-time interactive viewport rendering, which is a nice thing to have. On the other hand, Blender has two different render engines that can be used for totally different purposes. Cycles is a Blender's physically path tracer for production rendering and generally speaking to render high quality images with as much efficiency as possible. It is designed to provide physically based results with artistic control and flexible shading nodes for production needs. Eevee is also a render engine that ships with Blender, but it serves a different purpose than Cycles, because it is a real-time render engine focused on speed and interactivity while achieving the goal of rendering PBR materials at the same time. Eevee can be used interactively in the 3D viewport, but it can also produce high-quality final renders. If you want different or faster results, both 3ds Max and Blender have access to powerful third-party plugins for rendering such as V-Ray and Octane Render. So when it comes to rendering, I would say that they can pretty much do the same thing, whether you are using 3ds Max or Blender, and it seems like 3ds Max Arnold is catching up when it comes to real-time viewport rendering. But overall, I think that EV is better. Character Animation Blender has seen a lot of growth over the years when it comes to character animation because it was developed by the Blender team to rise up to the level of the animations they worked on when creating the Blender open movies. I would say that Blender is very good when it comes to character animation because it has a nice set of tools that can help you do so. Blender also offers a good set of tools when it comes to rigging characters and preparing for animation. You can use the built-in add-ons to allow you to rig your characters easily and faster, or if you have more experience you can create your own complex rigs. In addition to that, Blender is one of the few 3D software that has the ability to draw and create 2D animations. This is possible in Blender using the Grease Pencil, which is a system that was created years ago and it became much better later on. The Grease Pencil will open the door for navigating more possibilities using Blender, and recently it was used to create few short films in addition to a Netflix feature film. On the other end, 3ds Max has good character animation and rigging tools if you want to do character animation. Some people think that 3ds Max is bad when it comes to character animation, but this is not actually true, because it is especially being used by game development studios to do character animation. This is the case generally speaking because it has the CAD or Character Animation Toolkit, which is a character animation plugin for 3ds Max that became part of it 10 years ago. CAD facilitates character rigging, nonlinear animation, animation layering, motion capture import, and muscle simulation. Basically using it you can rig characters or animals in just few minutes, especially for video game projects. Also one of the most important things about CAT is the procedural animation it offers, which will allow you to animate characters without even touching keyframes. So in terms of character animation, I believe that both Blender and 3ds Max are good, but 3ds Max is seeing very few updates in this area. Final Thoughts as we have seen, both 3ds Max and Blender are great 3D modeling packages, but they do have points of strength and weakness. 
Blender is great for people on budget and in small teams. And it is great for artists and independent creators as well. And if you are committed to learning the concepts of art, any package will be good. However, if you want to work in a studio in any industry, such as game development or VFX, you will need to learn 3ds Max for this purpose. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, you can leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.